I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to the Another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you watching. And tonight I'm very pleased to, and happy to introduce Wilson Green. Thanks for coming and Glad to be here. sharing your story. And, and you'd like to uh, kind of do a little introduction first, right? <laughs> right. Yes, I, I want to emphasize the reason that I'm coming on the program and speaking is because I have a lot of um, Mormon family uh, relatives, friends, and the church as a whole that I am very pro-Mormon actually because I have a love for them and I want them to know the truth yeah. that I've found. Well, I appreciate you saying that and we probably need to be reminded of that once in a while. I know we're caught, considered anti-Mormon at times and Mormon bashing and all, but really we love Mormons. I, my whole family's Mormon. I was Mormon for 65 years. We love them, but, but Mormonism and the doctrines and history of the church has real problems. And, and hopefully we'll be able to share a few of those today and what your journey was. So tell us a little bit about your background as, uh, as you were growing up and all of us here in Utah, I guess. Yes, I, I grew up in Bountiful yeah. and uh, from the time I was uh, almost newborn and um, was uh, pretty active in the church. My parents weren't active, but I went to uh, primary Sunday school, uh, priesthood meetings, went sacrament all the, meetings. All the meetings and yeah, everything. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> mutual and scouts. I was very active yeah. until uh, high school years and I think it's kind of a common thing for a lot of uh, kids at that age to l lose interest in church. But, <laughs> but you did take seminary and... Took seminary so, for two years yeah. and I always felt like I was uh, very devoted to God. I always had very, very strong faith. I'd pray every night no matter what, even mm -hmm. though I may have gone a good period of time without attending church. I yeah. didn't really see a real close connection between my prayers and church attendance. Yeah. Read the Book of Mormon, did you at all, or in seminary? And no, not until I went on a mission. Oh, where were you called on a mission? Ohio. Okay, so tell us about that experience. Well, in uh, 1968, uh, most of my friends were going on missions, and I couldn't say that I really knew the church is true, but because all my close relatives and friends said it was, I assumed it was, and I thought, well, I have an obligation to God to yeah. serve a mission if I was blessed to be born into the true church. It's all you'd never known, right? Right. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so how did the mission go? Well, it went pretty well at first. It, it was um, a period of learning, uh, you know, memorizing the missionary lessons and reading the Book of Mormon for the first time. And uh, when I learned the missionary lessons, I felt like, well, the church really is true. It sounded logical, talking about an apostasy and then a restoration. Sure. And I thought, wow, this is uh, great. The church is true, and I'm out here serving God. So I was getting kind of excited about getting that. Getting a good testimony of the church. And uh, had you ever shared your testimony before that? I guess on your missionary farewell address? Or well, n not really. I, ju I just assumed it was true, but I couldn't say that I really, really knew. knew it was true. But then I, I felt like I could say yeah, that when I uh, 
the first half of my mission or so, two-thirds yeah. of my mission. Okay, go ahead and tell us a little more then. Well, <laughs> after about two-thirds of the way through the mission, after uh, reading the Book of Mormon for the second time, and prior to that I'd memorized hundreds of Bible verses and other really? scriptures, Book of Mormon. Yeah. I was reading the Book of Mormon for the second time, as I mentioned, and I could see that there was some well, plagiarism going on. I could read of a lot the Bible. Of, <laughs> of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. I'd read verses in Second Nephi, Third Nephi, or different places, and uh, it rang a bell in my mind. So I'd pull out my Bible and I could find where those verses came from. It shook me up quite a bit. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what I was thinking then about <clears throat> those verses. If they were, uh, I guess I just assumed that God revealed His Word to one person and revealed it to another person. And on and some verses, I, you could get away with that, yeah. like saying, you know, all the Isaiah verses. You know, the, uh, that's just yeah. copied word for word. But then mixed into that, there'd be so many verses by Paul mainly that yeah. I found that were uniquely Paul. And I thought, yeah. no, this is definitely being plagiar yeah. plagiarized from the, the Bible. So it got to be so bad that I couldn't um, keep reading it because I wanted to keep oh. a testimony. Yeah. Had to set the Book of Mormon aside Sorry, because aside. I, I was fearful that I was going to... Uh, it would shake me up so much that I couldn't teach. And so I started reading the Doctrine and Covenants. But then that wasn't much better because I'd read where Joseph Smith would conveniently receive a revelation for Emma, telling her that if, if, she, that if uh, she didn't allow him to take extra wives, that uh, she'd be damned. And yeah. I thought, oh no, this, this looks real fishy. And it really bothered me a lot. I wanted the church to be true. I, I thought it had been out sure. there serving God. Yeah. After uh, time went on and uh, a couple transfers on the mission, I'd be praying uh, intensely, trying to find out, is the church really true? Am I teaching the truth? I'd fast, and I'd stay up till midnight reading the Book of Mormon. Sometimes it was almost like God was just uh, showing me in the Book of Mormon, this is not for me. And uh, <clears throat> as uh, time progressed, I got uh, promoted to be a zone leader. Yeah. in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, at that point I had so many doubts that I couldn't teach anymore, so I just kept busy doing being, other things, being a, a <laughs> leader, own leader, his own yeah. leader, you know, having Interesting. meetings or filling out reports yeah. and things like that. Yeah, you eventually talked to the mission president. Right? Yeah, it got to be so bad, I, I thought I, I just needed to go home early, and uh, it wasn't real early, about five or six weeks. And I was honor honorably released, but um, after I came home, I attended the University of Utah, mm -hmm. and uh, I spent a lot of time meeting with the institute teachers at the uh, institute program just off campus. And these were very uh, well-educated men with uh, sure. like PhDs and master's degrees in church history and. I spent many hours meeting with them, trying to figure things out. Ask questions and talk and stuff. And right. Did but that help? Not much, because they <laughs> they would bring up a lot of things that uh, you didn't have even were, heard of. I huh? hadn't heard of yet. Yeah, and uh, such as Joseph Smith having himself crowned king of the earth. Mm. Also, during that time, I was finding out that uh, the temple ceremony was copied from the masonry ceremony, wow. almost word for word. Yeah. Um, I found a lot of things, uh, learned a lot of things that I didn't know as a missionary. And it, I was uh, very intently hoping that uh, the church was true because well, I wanted sure. to think that those two years that I spent teaching people was serving God, not teaching a false gospel. Well, it's our whole life. It's our culture, our social, and and what I was raised in, and I certainly wanted the church to be true. There was never any, in fact, I don't even think it was in my thought process that it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. There were just problems that I couldn't reconcile. After a while, it became too, like they say, the shelf too heavy. But mm. So you eventually got an opportunity to go to a, a sermon or a, a speech. Yeah, Walter Tell Martin was in that. town. I read in the university paper that he was speaking at a church just off campus. And so I went to listen to him. And at the end of the uh, 
his talk, I stood up uh, during the question and answer period to ask a question, and then uh, the meeting was over, and um, a couple from Brigham City, who are very dear friends of mine, uh, a Miller family, uh, husband and wife, introduced themselves, and they said that uh, they had uh, used to be LDS, and they have now found the true gospel and salvation in Jesus Christ. Was this shocking? Uh, a little, a little that. bit, yeah. yeah. But I had uh, what do you started. Mean? Hear, I've got the true <laughs> church here. <laughs> I, I'd been hearing a little bit about people that have left the church, and uh, so later, shortly after that, they invited me to dinner at their home in Brigham City. And uh, when I got there, they introduced me to a couple relatives, and I didn't really catch their name. And they gave me a book, uh, Mormonism: Shadow or Reality, and. We started thumbing through the book together, and they mentioned that uh, the words, well, when we wrote this book, and then I said, oh, you're yeah. Gerald and Sandra Tanner. Yeah. And uh, so I, uh, we talked a lot about uh, uh, church history and doctrines. Uh, Were you just kind of blown away at this point? Yeah, just... that, that, uh, that really shook me up, because here again, I really wanted the church to be true. I was yeah. hoping that it would come out uh, on top. It's got to be an answer here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, driving home that day, February of um, 74, got home that night, and I thought, I need to talk to somebody high up in the church. So I looked up yeah. in Eldon Tanner's home phone number. I was surprised it was in the phone book, but he agreed to meet me the next morning. So mon <clears throat> Monday morning, I was there at his office, and he was there before he did, and, and uh, we had a, a chat. about a <laughs> half-hour discussion, I guess. Yeah, what did he tell you? Well, he was pretty harsh, and uh, he said, if you want to get out of this church, we can certainly accommodate you. He's actually pretty cranky and with me. <laughs> and I said, no, I, I want to believe the church well, is true. Oh, were you sharing with him? Yeah, I, I, I talked or? about uh, doctrines, uh, things like um, uh, false prophecies of Joseph Smith, the temple ceremony coming from masonry. Um, did he this, seem to know this stuff? Yeah, it didn't. none of it seemed to surprise him. Oh. And he said, well, you're playing with fire here. And I said, well, I just want to know the truth. That, you know, if Did the you church say is facts true. or fire? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say I'm messing with facts? <laughs> anyway, so he said, we can accommodate you if you want to get out of the church. Yeah, and, but... and I emphasized that, no, I want to believe. That That's why I'm here. Yeah, right? So we, uh, I mean, we finished that off. Open, I, right? I asked for a blessing and, and then yeah. left. Later, uh, a couple of years later, I guess it was, I met with uh, Paul H. Dunn, and he was a lot more friendly and, and kind, and he mentioned to me, he said, well, if you think you have a lot of questions, he, he pointed over to his desk, and he says, I've got a drawer full of questions uh, myself. Oh, my and goodness. And I didn't really dwell into that, but uh, yeah. uh, so uh, as time went on, I uh, just kept my eyes open and studied and prayed. And then it wasn't until uh, quite a few years later I was attending a Christian church service and they were talking about, the pastor was talking about Paul and how he um, was stating that uh, salvation is not from works, it's purely by faith, grace through faith. Yeah. And he emphasized all his accompli accomplishments uh, being uh, born and a uh, Hebrew of Hebrews, uh, born on the uh, uh, circumcised the eighth day, and uh, also what else was it? Uh, he said, "Oh, a Pharisee." And, yeah, Pharisee, uh, Pharisee. He said, "As far as uh, following the law, faultless." In other words, he was virtually perfect at kept, uh, keeping the commandments. Keep the law. But he said, after he found Christ, that uh, all those accomplishments, the good deeds, the works, uh, were rubbish. And, and that's what really clicked in my mind and uh, made me come to the decision to go meet with a bishop in my ward. What did he have to say to you? Well, I, I just said, uh, I, I need to leave the church. I've been uh, dragging my feet for a lot of years and researching, hoping that the church is true, but I'm certain that it's not. And so he, he asked uh, if I would like to either write a letter or meet with the stake high council, and I said I'd like to meet with the stake high council, I felt I owed it to God to witness to mm. other people in, yeah. in my area of what I found. Yeah, and so did you attend a, 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 a I guess, excommunication yes, high council? Yes, yes, it was an excommunication. Sounds like a nasty word. Yeah. Uh, 
But uh, the the stake present and everyone there were very polite. And he asked me, he said, um, well, first he said, uh, Brother Green here is asked to have his name removed from the church records. Would you like to take him in and tell us why? And I emphasized that I'm not leaving the church because I'm bitter. Uh, I have a lot of good memories growing up in the church. Yeah. It has nothing to do with bitterness or anything like that. It's just the doctrines aren't true. It's not from God. Interesting. And I started to talk about some examples. I mentioned all the <clears throat> all the verses in Isaiah where God makes it very clear that He's the one and only God. There are no gods before me. There'll be no yeah. gods after me. It's like several chapters in a row, 43, right. 44, 45, that all talk about right. there being a only one God, no other gods beside He me. says, I know of no other gods. And this is God speaking. He, he doesn't know of any of the gods. He and know. <laughs> I'm the so first where did and Joseph last. Smith come up with more gods? And, huh? and so I, right. And so yeah. I said, now Joseph Smith said that there are millions of gods and that our God, Father, had a, a, father, a, a God right? and a, he had a God and he had yeah. a Father and so forth. Yeah. And we can become gods. And I looked at the Stake High Council and said, you and I can become gods. So I said, Somebody's lying here. Either God's lying when he says he's the one and only God, or Joseph Smith was lying when yeah. he said there were millions of gods. And I said, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to bet my eternity on Joseph Smith. And everybody there listened very intently. They mm -hmm. replied, listened closely, and then I talked about the temple ceremony, about how Joseph Smith took that from masonry, and it's virtually word for word identical to the Masonic oh, yeah. ceremony. Yeah, if you look that up on the internet, you can see under masonry, it, it shows you the handshakes and the different ways that life can be taken, and the, uh, the uh, wording is yeah. all very much identical to the temple. Yeah, the uh, signs, tokens, and penalties. Yeah, and they're all masonry. Also, we talked about all the false prophecies that Joseph Smith made. Virtually all of them were false, yeah. and yet God in the Bible says if a person makes one prophecy that's not true, he's a false prophet. Yeah. And so um, that's why I need to remove my name from the church. Now, did you get the sense that they had heard this stuff before, any of these, the bishop or the stake presidency? And uh, yes, I, I sort of had, had that feeling because nobody seems surprised at anything that I talked about. Now, six of them were for you and are supporting you, or not supporting, I guess, defending you and making sure that the court is held properly, and then six are for the church standing in, in behalf of oh, the church. Yeah, did you I, sense I, that at no, all? No, I didn't sense that at yeah. all. I, the, I'd never heard that before. So Yeah, that's part of the High Council format, is six to be for you and, I say for you and for against you, but it's just mm -hmm. to make sure everything's done properly. When we went into our court, the stake president met us out in the hallway and said, I don't want you to say anything. Mm. So it was virtually didn't. the opposite for yeah. me. Yeah. They let me do all the talking, and they just yeah. listened. And I could tell, looking in their eyes, that when I started talking about this logic and common sense and, and what God says... That <laughs> Making people think. <laughs> yeah, that it, it was sinking bit. in. You know, they, were, they could really tell so what I was saying was... You were sincere and Yeah, and, and I and sensed honest. that they knew what I was saying was true. Yeah. But... You know, sometimes, uh, no matter how much truth you give to a person, if they're yeah. locked into believing a lie, yeah, they'll stick with it. Especially if they're it, not willing sad. to look and think right. at all. So you do end up going to a Christian church, and how was that the first time? Oh, well, first time, it, uh, first couple of times it felt a little awkward. Yeah, yeah. I went to different churches. Yeah. and uh, but That's a freedom we have, isn't it, now, to, but, to go where we choose to. But I'm attending a church that I just love. I used to kind of dread going to church when I was um, in the LDS church because it was always so um, usually kind of boring. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be negative here, but right. so much was time was spent talking about Joseph Smith and Brigham Young and pioneers and right. home teaching and tithing and. Sabbath day observance and, and word of wisdom. Yeah, I, I virtually, I say this all the time, that I will attend a Christian service where I attend church, and I'll, I'll learn more in one sermon than I learn the whole year attending LDS church. So, and, and the and, praising, isn't the songs, I mean, they're all directed at Jesus or God. We're right, worshiping yeah, Him. Yeah, it's worship. I, I never felt like I was worshiping 
when I was in the LA Church. I read something, uh, uh, an article one time where they were talking about somebody, uh, some church leaders were defending the church and the temple ceremony being secret. And, yeah. and they mentioned that this is how we worship. And, and I remember when I read that, I thought, there's no worship in the temple or there's no. very little worship anywhere. You know, yeah. of course you pray in the sermon, but it's nothing like a, a Christian no. church. And, and once again, I'm emphasizing, I'm not trying to be uh, negative except for trying to express the fact that there is life after Mormonism. And uh, yes. when you are a born again Christian and you put your faith and trust in Jesus, and not and his finished work on the cross. His finished work on the cross, and not an organization, not a corporation that, yeah. uh, or uh, uh, a religion that's really based on one person. You know, if Joseph Smith, Isn't it? it, it's all centered on him. If he's not a true prophet, then everything's wrong. And, uh, and many of the general authorities going way back have made that statement. If uh, Joseph right. Smith wasn't a true prophet, or the Book of Mormon was proven to be false, it, everything falls apart. Yeah. You know, that's the foundation. And in my, with my studying that I've done over the years, it's totally fallen apart. I mean, it's like there's a thousand percent proof that it's false. So the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, the yeah. Pearl of Great Price. By the a thousand percent is what I mean by that is there is so much information to prove that it's false. You know, basically in a nutshell, there's 10 times more evidence and proof than you really need to yeah. be able to make that decision. Yeah, even some of these few things that come out should make people think and stop and ponder a little bit. And just opposite of what the Bible is. I mean, as a Mormon, I didn't trust the Bible. Article of Faith number 8 tells me that it's only mm -hmm. accurate as far as it's translated correctly, but the Dead Sea Scrolls and other things that they find all the time yeah, in archaeology yeah. prove that the 40,000, I believe, original manuscripts and of the New Testament. And, and uh, yeah. historians and archaeologists, uh, everything that I've studied yeah. is proves that the, the Bible is virtually 100% trustworthy. And I had no, tr uh, no respect for the Bible as a Mormon. I carried it and I read it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But uh, if there was ever any question, now I realize that there's no Mormonism in the Bible. There's no right. Mormonism in the Book of Mormon. I right. never realized that. Yeah. <laughs> and, That's true, yeah. And, and every question you're saying about Joseph Smith, too, every problem that we ever run across, polygamy, masonry, whatever else it is, can all be answered by the one answer of Joseph Smith, prophet or not, mm -hmm. you know? And the evidence is overwhelming. There, yeah. There's no possibility. I mean, there is not one chance in a million yeah. that Joseph Smith was a true prophet or that the church is true. And so that's why I'm here is because there's, my heart goes out to LDS people yeah. that you just can't put your eternal welfare uh, in the hands of the church and just agree to follow yeah. the, the doctrines without really studying it yourself. If I, if I was to make a recommendation to anybody, I would say uh, anybody in the church or thinking about joining the LDS Church, you really need to be on your knees a lot and pray and be completely honest with yourself and completely honest with God yeah. and, and He'll lead you to the truth because He wants you to know the truth more than you do. Yeah, start reading like you, I think you've said before, uh, we were talking John, to read John. Yeah, I, I would start the, with the, the book of John, the Gospel of John, and then after that maybe the book of um, well, Romans or oh, Matthew. Oh, so excellent, yeah. yeah. And they talk about grace and, and being saved by grace, not works and right. faith. And it's such a relief, I mean, it's, uh, it was such a relief to leave the church and to be able to just worship God and put all those stressful worries uh, away. That uh, well, there's a freedom. Take the, the load off your shoulders yeah. of worrying about polygamy and yeah. and all the changes in the doctrines and ordinances of the church. Yeah, and even the temple. You we oh yeah, the temple, temple ordinances temple have changed yeah. tremendously. Well, and he says, "My yoke is easy, my burden is light, and he that believeth in me hath everlasting life." And that's, what a gift. And uh, we have, just have don't you, appreciate that. You may have noticed, like I did, after leaving the church and 
finding the truth and accepting salvation in Christ alone, that it's like a light is turned on and you read the Bible and then all of a oh sudden my goodness. it all makes sense. It, it all, does. It, you know what it's talking about. It's not a mystery. When I was in the church, LDS church, it was very confusing and, uh, yeah. you know, and it, uh, and things didn't, didn't make it. sense. So yeah. it, it's like, as a Mormon, it was like trying to put a round peg in a square hole. But yeah. now, in the true gospel of Jesus Christ, everything fits perfectly. Well, I don't know how you were, but on my missionary Bible, I had all these scriptures underlined and read, you know. Mm -hmm. But now I've gone back into my missionary Bible. None of the grace discussions or, uh, or is it if in Galatians where it says that if an angel preaches any other gospel than the one we preach, that's not highlighted. I haven't highlighted half the scriptures. So when I started reading them with my eyes open, and like you say, the light comes on, oh, it was a joy. I, I, I just couldn't believe what I was reading. Somebody else had thrown scriptures in there I had never read before. And, <laughs> and when amazing. I say that I, I, I know I've found the true gospel, I can say it 100% sincerely. I, this is I, the gospel I, Paul I was teaching. There, <laughs> there is no possibility that uh, yeah. what I believe as a Christian is not true. Well, Wilson, our time's almost gone. Uh, have you got a message or something you'd like to share with friends or family? Just a little bit of what I've already mentioned is to um, it's critical to you can't bet your eternity on a false gospel, and yeah. Mormonism is a false gospel. Yeah. But you don't have to take my word for it. If a person really sincerely prays, I mean very sincerely, and study, do a little research, and critically and, think a little bit, and yeah, yeah. and. Um, be honest with yourself, honest with God. Yeah. Don't be afraid to attend a, a good Christian church. And uh, if you do that, uh, there's no way that you can You'll have a joy that you've never known before. And every interview we've had has talked about a different Jesus and a different perspective of who they are and who, what they owe to Jesus and what he's done for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. It's been a good journey of you. Would oh, you change anything? Nothing, except no. I would have. I, I would make the decision many, many years sooner. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you had some insights there. God was, but now you can see God's hand in leading you along. Well, I so used to strongly. We're actually out of time, my oh, friend. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, we appreciate you spending some time with us, and Wilson, thanks so much for sharing. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, yeah. Well, it's been our joy and. I hope people have been able to learn something from this. And you, you do need to consider your eternity and uh, what choices you're making. So we appreciate you watching. See you next time.